All right, welcome to Pod to Win the Game. I am Charles Robinson. He is Frank Schwab. We are debuting finally the playoffs. And, you know, we when we did the midweek show last week, we said, hey, even though some, you know, looks like some dog matchups, feels like the playoffs has produced of recent years. I don't know. To me, I feel like it's been more entertaining. Primetime, some of the primetime games are more entertaining. And I don't think he's disappointed. It felt to me, it felt like they were all great, right? I, you know, they weren't all close, but every single game was entertaining in its own way. And, uh, you know, Sunday night lived up to really what the rest of the slate had been. Yeah, I I came honestly came into this weekend without any expectations. I figured eh, the playoffs are really going to get going next week when we get right. our contenders going and good matchups, whatever. This week is maybe a good game or two. We'll see. I think the craziest part about these first four, five games is at some point in four of them, in the first half, I said, this game's over. Yeah, it's yep. just going to be a boat race. And <laughs> that team who was behind ended up leading at some point. I just, just crazy weekend of football. Man, there's a lot to talk about. It, it delivered completely way far beyond my expectations. Yeah, we're not done yet. Obviously, we still have no. Cowboys, Cowboys, Buccaneers. Hopefully, it lives yeah. up to the rest of the slate. Um We'll, let's start with Sunday night, obviously. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals, I mean, I'd have to say they eked it out against the Baltimore Ravens, 24-17 yeah. to 17 at home. Uh, the two biggest plays, I think, defining plays were the Sam Hubbard 98-yard uh, fumble return for a touchdown to put Cincinnati ahead, game winner. And uh, then the, the, not really a Hail Mary, but Tyler Huntley throws it into the end zone, it actually ricochets and touches James Prochet's fingertips, and he's not able to to pull it in. You know, would have had an opportunity to tie the game or if you go for two to win. But um, I, I, for Huntley, I I didn't think Huntley played his best game. I think he played his worst game. thought he had little moments in this game where obviously he kept Baltimore competitive. I thought Baltimore's defense was stood on their head, great. basically. I thought great. they were, they were great. fantastic. Yeah, yeah I... Couldn't help but thinking during the course of this game, how much different is this if Lamar Jackson's playing this game? We get the news that Lamar Jackson, interestingly, did not join the team on this trip, did not fly with the team. Odd, very odd situation. Yeah, let's unfolding. just start with that because okay. I think that's a big takeaway here. Yeah. Because, I mean, me and you know, and pretty much everybody knows, unless you have like a concussion or there's some serious reason not to travel – especially the franchise quarterback, yeah. he's traveling. I mean, he's on the sideline, mm -hmm. coaching up Huntley. Uh, what do you make of this? Uh, to me, and maybe I'm being too dramatic here, this is a blaring alarm that that this relationship yeah. is fractured, to say the least. And maybe over, before Melissa Star pregame said that, that, oh, oh hey, LeBar Jackson didn't travel, I always thought, okay, it's going to work out somehow, the franchise tag and then a long-term, whatever. Literally, the moment she said that, I'm like, yeah. Oh, this might be done. Like, that's how I think that, like, again, maybe I'm making too much of it. Okay. But that's how rare this is. Here's the thing, though. Okay. And and this mattered to me because NFL players have been away from their teams before. They've not traveled before. Mar Jackson's silent on social media tonight. Never. Uh, that too. Yo, he's Good balling. Point. Good point. My guy. You know, uh, yeah. he could have said something nice about Huntley anything right and and all we hear about lamar jackson i've never had a reason to not believe it is he's all about his guys okay it's not mm -hmm. about his contracts mm -hmm. not about all this other stuff lamar's about his guys and yet his guys are out there they're fighting they're clawing they got a chance here i'm checking out social media and i wouldn't see anything now again twitter you know instagram um maybe i wasn't looking for the right thing maybe there's something i don't know about where he's you know uh right, sending right. some shout outs but yeah i thought TikTok, myspace yeah, who, who knows? knows where he's at yeah it, but yeah to not not to travel okay is is definitely an eyebrow raiser um mm -hmm. i wrote earlier in the week just about how both sides had kind of botched this entire relationship you know the mm -hmm. ravens really should have never let it out how much money they potentially had on the table for lamar jackson and lamar Going at it with fans on on uh, social media, uh, putting out the health update the way that he did clearly showcased some oddities going on between mm -hmm. he and the franchise. You just don't see that happen. Um, 
has not since that health update, by the way, on his, and at least on his Twitter account, has not had any updates, nothing else on his Twitter account since putting out the health update. You add it all up. And one person who said it, and, and I'm going to end up writing about this, Sean Payton said, I think Lamar Jackson will be on a different team next year. Now, here's the thing. Mm. Here's why when Sean Payton says it, it catches my attention. Sean knows Sean Harbaugh. Sean knows guys on that staff. Sean knows what's going on. They talk. It's come out of the franchise. There's some frustration about the timeline, all these other things. Yeah, I think this is when you add up all the stuff that's going on, this little brewing Cold War, and then the fact that they couldn't come to a contract agreement over all this time, I think that there is a very solid possibility we're looking at a tag and trade with Lamar Jackson. And I do think that there is still appetite out there for someone to go and get Lamar Jackson. I, I, I'm just telling you right now, Carolina offered three firsts and three thirds for Deshaun Watson before that whole mess started. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mm-hmm. the kind of talent David Tepper wants. I don't yeah. think David Tepper's even sitting there and going, Hey, let's go get, um, oh, 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 let's go draft a guy. Let's go draft a guy. I mean, if that's the option that's on the table, but I think people would be out of their minds if he is not a swinging for Sean Payton, which he is, they've requested, uh, uh, an opportunity to talk to Sean Payton and then B not saying to Sean Payton, what'd you think about us going to get Lamar Jackson? <laughs> you think maybe I, you'd I, like to coach him? <laughs> I, I, the funny thing is I really think, uh, look, I mean, time heals maybe by March. Uh, the, maybe the, this is all kind of blown over and the Ravens realize we've seen our team with Tyler Huntley and Anthony right. Brown. We need yeah. this guy and pay him whatever money. It, it happens, right? Like th- this does. But right now, if you're asking me, where does Lamar Jackson play next year? I probably still would have the Ravens in the lead, but not that big of a favorite. But then funny enough, I think the four NFC South teams come like right after that. Yep. You think about, yep. All of them need a quarterback. Yep. Uh, I think all of them would love to have Lamar Jackson and just kind of reshape their franchise that way. I, I think the, the funny thing about Lamar putting down social media, this is my injury, right? Nobody wants to like really acknowledge him. Maybe he really is hurt. Like everybody thinks oh, I think some kind I, of a think, shell game. I think there's a very real chance that he really is hurt. Right. I think there is a difference of, I, I think it's clear there's a difference of opinion about what the timeline should have been, or else they would not have leaked right. out Correct. early on. I agree. Hey, yep. we're looking at like a month. Okay. And then when the yep. month came, then it was like, hmm, what's going on? And here's the thing about PCL sprains, too. Like high ankle sprains, they can be different for different players, but they can be things that linger. He could totally be yep. like, hey, I'm not feeling great. He said they're swelling. And he's like, I'm, yeah, you know, I don't got my deal yet. I'm not getting back out there until I'm 100% right. That much could be true. But you know uh-huh. what? There could also be guys sitting there looking at him going, it's the playoffs. It's right. Been, it's been yeah. how many? Six but games. I, honestly, like, what's Charles, up, I have a really hard time believing that Lamar Jackson, if he could play, if he re- like, if it's I'm, close, I don't disagree. I know that's uh, not. It's, I, I, it's just hard for me to believe. His rep would, is his rep is that it would not be the decision right, he'd make. Right. His rep. I, I think what is completely counter to this, right? Co- correct. Absolutely. And I think his, it, it's, I'm trying to you know read between the lines here, as we all are. His tweet earlier this week updating his health, I think was frustration that the Ravens really weren't coming to his defense. Right. This, the Ravens had really let this kind of snowball on them a little bit yep. by, you know, this terse, like, I'm not talking about it. Yep. Uh, we're just moving on with no what we updates. got, whatever. They're, no updates. They're not really helping Lamar out like right. if they're on the same page and this isn't some cold war situation they're like look guys quit asking he's hurt he can't go he'd be right. here if if he could and they never put out that message the real question I wonder I don't know if it's been out there I didn't see it I don't know if you know this whose decision was it for Lamar Jackson not to be there was it Lamar saying I don't want to travel with y'all I'm not happy with you guys right now right. or was it the Ravens saying that tweet was really out of line. You just stay home because somebody yeah. made the call of you're not coming to this game, which again, really, really rare right. a decision and, was made. Right. Yeah. By who? Yeah. That's the thing. And I, I think that matters a little bit here. Just yeah. a crazy situation. I, I mean, I'm sure there's look, there's two months more of Lamar talked, but it is fascinating where this thing is going to go. And I agree. They almost won this game with Tyler Huntley who did play well, but I think we agree that same game, but at Lamar is the quarterback. The, the Ravens win this game. And, uh, you know, who knows where it goes from there because they got the defense. 
Lamar's obviously a transcendent player. So it was, it's disappointing he wasn't playing in this game, but we, I, a lot's going to be uncovered in these next couple months about this whole situation. Yeah, there's no question. And, and, and you're right. It's a really good point that we don't know yet how that decision was arrived at. Um, I do think there was an element of frustration, as you said, um, in terms of him putting out that health update. Uh, we'll get back to the game here, but I, I, just one fundamental thing that I, I I ended up writing about, and then, you know, I'm going to write about this whole situation again tonight. Um, the fact that there's not an agent, I'm just telling people, absolutely, players can do their own deals. Roquan Smith did it. It's very successful mm-hmm. doing his deal. The problem when you don't have an agent, though, is when you run into trouble like this, which is contract impasse injury. Here's what the agent does. In an injury situation, agent says to the media, whoever their sources are, he needs like he can't, he's not good. He's just not, it's not a contract thing. Like he's genuinely hurt. Right. Like, and, and Lamar doesn't have to go out there and do it himself. Right. It gets put you're up. Right. People right. understand mm-hmm. it. Right. Mm-hmm. The, it mm-hmm. happens all the time. Right. Agents leak injury information nonstop. Probably really shouldn't be doing it, but they do it. Okay. And often it's to help the situation with the player. Part two of this, probably the more, the fundamental part that, you know, we've, we've now moved on to this injury, but before is the contract agents become the flak jacket right like you are yes the team says we we couldn't come to the deal this agent's a dick this this agent's an ass like he he's he's this (laughs) guy's he's he's he's, lamar lamar he's giving lamar bad advice right like you just and you kill the agent which is what they did with eric burkhart when you're doing the kyler murray deal right eric burkhart's Mm -hmm. the, the bulldog he's putting out all these statements the team's like what the hell's wrong with this guy why is he doing this right now it was people are going after kyler they were like, what's wrong with Eric Burkhart, right? right? But that's what an agent serves at that point. They turn into the bulldog. They turn into the protective shield. And the player can be separated, right, for the most part. Right, right, right. That's not happening here. But look, just to no. get back to this game. Yeah. Um, I think, I look, Cincinnati, I didn't think it was, uh, I didn't think it was Cincinnati's best game, particularly offensively. But I, I looked at the line. Now you're looking at a situation where, you know, and I think they said it on the broadcast. There was like, you know, and I, and it is right. There were like 15 games, 15 straight games. There were, the, the offensive line was set. It was perfect. There was no changes. And then all of a sudden, you lose one guy. And then the next injury comes, you lose another guy. This, they, they lose a third starter in this game. So, John if, Williams, if yeah. You're, yeah, if you're potentially looking at a situation where you have the Bengals now moving forward to play the Buffalo Bills and you're down three starting offensive linemen, that's that's a really 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 difficult um, situation to deal with moving forward, and it's is like the absolute worst time for this to start happening. This is like a couple of years ago with the the Kansas City Chiefs. Once they start losing yeah. offensive linemen, oh like, yeah yeah great idea yeah how, great yeah. comparison. Mm-hmm. And you just I mean it's it, it, the cluster injuries are what kill you, uh, or you know losing a Joe Burrow or something like that. But when you lose three. All of a sudden, the Bills, who have a really good front, and they can get over on you. And oh, yeah. it's, it's tough to adjust. When, when you're missing one, maybe two, all right, you can patch things together. You get the three. That's kind of critical mass. Um, so we'll see. I, I don't, yeah, I don't downgrade the Bengals at all. I, the Ravens are just a tough matchup for them defensively. All three games, Ravens defense yeah, played, really played really, really well yep. against this offense. And, but yet, yet the, the defense came up with the big plays, particularly Logan Wilson just making a heck of a play. I, I assume that Tyler Huntley on the quarterback sneak that was obviously the biggest play of the weekend. Tyler Huntley was supposed to kind of well, like, jump. get low <laughs> yeah, because jump. he's got three guys behind him. Yeah, right? push him. And this is a Jalen Hurts play, right? But he sees an opening, tries to jump Logan Wilson, I guess it was 0.6 yards from the ball crossing the plane, according to Next Gen Stats. Logan Wilson you know, reaches up and knocks it away, which is just a great heads-up play. Sam Hubbard takes it the other way. Mark Andrews almost chased him down, by the way. And that would have been a heck of a, you know, we would have been talking about that, like Dom Beatty, Ben Watson, you know, these these really great hustle did, plays. Did he get he pushed didn't. in the back, by the way? Did you think? I, I thought, thought he thought flopped a, flag a was little coming. bit. Oh, I didn't did. think it was worth a flag. I, 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 I agree with you that at first I was like, I agree with you at first I was like, uh, is that a penalty? And then I, I saw it again. Normally, like, when a player ah, sticks his hands enough. up immediately, yeah, like, yeah, it's always the telltale that's, that's, sign. Yeah, right? you're coming yeah. out of the pawn shop with the TV and the cops show up. You stick your hands up. Like, <laughs> uh, that's what that looked like. I was like, here comes the flag. Yeah, uh, but you know, the Bengals defense comes up with the big play. They move on. I. I, I just thought it, this was one of those survive and advance type of games in a divisional game, tough matchup. 
just you know the Bengals. I I don't downgrade them much just because I thought yeah. this was a hard one, but they found a way. It's fair. It's a, it's a you know facing a team three times is always difficult. And like you said, I mean yeah. it was a it was a week ago too. You know? Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's you know it's it's uh, the familiarity gets there. I, I would tend to believe it always benefits the defense. Anytime games get played, you, you end up facing an opponent three times. Um, it gets harder and harder to surprise yeah. them with anything you're doing offensively. Right. Um, so it's it'll be interesting to see though where the what the injury status is um along the offensive line because as you said the yeah. bills i don't want ed oliver going up against <laughs> like right. like you know and they're gonna figure out okay where's the weakest spot here let's slide that around and figure out what we can do and we're gonna end up with middle pressure so yeah absolutely let's swing it ahead to the other the, the game previous to that on sunday which was the new york giants 31 minnesota vikings 24 I'll just ask you, how much money did Daniel Jones make on Sunday? Because, who boy, was he good. I mean, yeah. this is, and I wrote about this in the game, or basically saying, if you would have said a year ago, like, Daniel Jones is going to put the team on his back and win a playoff game. He's right. like, what are you talking about? It, it, I think this game really showed, uh, hey, we're going to dunk on the Vikings, oh, you're frauds, blah, blah, blah. But I really think this game was just about Daniel Jones coming out party. Like, I don't know if he's going to continue this for years and years, but I think at this point, it's pretty clear the Giants aren't letting him go. I, that was a heck of a performance. I think he had 301 yards passing, 78 yards rushing, lost right. a couple at the end, kneeling it. Great performance by Daniel Jones. Yeah, the Vikings got their defensive issues, but tip your cap to the quarterback because he was the absolute focal point of this win. He was an athlete at Duke, right? Remember when he got drafted? We were all like, yeah. hey, no, he's a real athlete at quarterback. Like, this guy can run. He uses legs. Um, he, he can do off-schedule stuff if he has to. Um, but the biggest thing is, you know, he plays smart. Um, and, and yet when I watched him that first year with the giants, he made throws where I'm like, Whoa, okay. Like this guy, like mm -hmm. he, he looked to me like a player that like, okay, they might have their quarterback here. Now they can build this and, and it just kind of all fell apart or it slowly sank, you know, as, as he moved forward in his career. But yeah, this, I, I sat there and I was watching and he made a couple throws where I was like, God, yeah, that's right, man. I remember early in his career looking at him specifically when he was Danny Dimes in year one and going, wow, man, this guy's putting it on guys. Like he's, and I, I also thought about Brian Dayball too, where I'm like, it really is. I truly believe this. I really think there was something about Josh Allen developing that had a lot to do with Brian Dayball, helping him to develop into a better quarterback. And, uh, you know, I, are we seeing that now here? I, you know, I do. I think that from game one to the Vikings, do you think you saw Daniel Jones get better or play consistently better as a quarterback over the course of the season? Yeah, I, I don't think oh, there's no any doubt. question. So, and, and you from, look, Charles, the thing about it too is, I mean, everybody. We'll get the Brock Purdy in a second, but everybody's talking about, oh, yeah, he's got the scheme and his guys are running open. Well, he's throwing to. Debo Samuel, yeah. George Kittle, yeah. Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. Who the heck is Daniel Jones yeah. throwing to? Yeah. Like, there were some guys, honestly, the the tight end cager uh, during the game. I was like, I don't think I've heard of this guy. Like, and he's he's playing a prominent role in a wild card game, right? Like, they don't have a number one guy. They really don't have a number two guy. Has really Isaiah's good. played well. He played has well, played well. Maybe yeah. this is the start of some. Right. Darius Slayton has had his Slayton's moments, and moments. Bellinger is a good young tight end. But not a, not many of these guys would start for any other playoff team. Uh, maybe Listen, here or there, but Kenny Galladay, that's, that says a lot. Kenny Galladay is making more <laughs> than every other receiver on the roster combined. Oh, that's and crazy. Wow. It's just been an absolute atrocity as a yeah. signing. One of the worst free agent signings in NFL history. And yeah, so I, it, there's, as you said, there's an element of Evan Neal's going to get better. Okay. Um, yeah. They're going to continue to work on the skill position players around him. Saquon Barkley, that spin that moment where he broke in the open and he spun, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, that dude now, he, he looks like he used to look like it's getting close. He really, yeah. He, was, really he, had that, he had that dead spot in, late in the season. I was yeah. like, uh-oh, was he hitting a wall? But really finished strong. He yeah. looked great today. I, so wait, I think quick, we agree about the contract. Yeah, yeah. The contract. You asked me about the contract. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just going to ask that. Yeah, he, I mean, so Gino, early earlier in the season, when it's like, okay, Gino looks like he's going to be a Pro Bowl player. He looks like mm -hmm. he's their long-term answer at quarterback. When I talk to people about, you know, slot him for me, figure it out. They said 30 to 35. Like, if this is who he is moving forward, he's going to be a 30 to $35 million quarterback. I think Daniel Jones is the same thing. I think I, I 
Wow. If you told me, yeah, hey, I, I don't disagree. Either. Yeah, if this is, I mean, what we've seen now, let's again, let's see the next game. But um, if they sign him to a deal that now is comparable to what Jared Goff is making, um, the kind of money that I, I, like to me, that's the new second tier of, you know, the not elite guys. They're not necessarily um, top 10 guys. But if they fit somewhere between 11 and 16, then those guys are the 30, you know, 30, 30 to 35, 35 million dollar quarterbacks. That's what that's where this that's is fair. trending to. So that's, that's what totally, I, I agree with that. And that's totally fair. Now, let me ask a follow up. He gets, let's say, 32 and a half million, whatever, for mm-hmm. five years, whatever it's going to be. Are we sitting here in a year saying, wow, that was a mistake? Or are we saying, no, that wildcard playoff game showed he was ready to come alive and the additions they made and Evan Neal getting better and all. Like, which? how do you think this Daniel Jones story turns out? I, I, I'm kind of sitting here saying, I think this guy could be a viable, really good quarterback for a few years now. I, I don't, two things make me optimistic. Number one, it wasn't just the one game scenario. He has been better no, no, all you're year. Right. You're right? correct, you're correct. So yeah. you have an entire year to digest, right? Number two, he's not coming out of nowhere. He this first year in the NFL it was clear he had talent. Okay. Like it was clear this guy is a good player. Now we understand why Dave Gettleman made him a first round pick. Mm-hmm. Um it, you know, well, shoot, a top 10 pick, you know, when it wasn't even expected. Yeah, six, yeah. And yeah, mm-hmm. six overall. And um, so I'm like, all right, what happened in between that point and this point? Dysfunction. Everything was wrong in the franchise. They were falling apart. Like it looked horrible. They had horrible coaching. You're firing one coach after another. You're firing the staffs, turnover, inconsistency. So to me, I'm like, okay, I can, there's, there is um, demonstrable evidence there that would suggest to you why he struggled. Okay. You get him with Brian Dayball. You have consistency um, from one year to the next. And by the way, he's an offensive coach. He's not going anywhere. He'll always be right. there for Daniel Jones. Mm-hmm. That all leads me to believe that, no, uh, you know, okay, we've seen enough. I think we can be comfortable. It's the same thing with Gino. I know Gino had ups and downs. I know he wasn't always perfect, but you know what? He was pretty good. Like he was, he, he's better mm-hmm. than a lot of what you're going to go out there and get. And you can't convince me that, Seattle spends, uh, you know, that first round pick that they have on a quarterback. You can't convince me that that quarterback is ultimately going to turn out being better than Geno Smith. It's a total crapshoot right. now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there's only Charles. Uh, we've talked about this. We know everybody. I think most people know this. There's five guys on the planet tops who doesn't matter who their coaches doesn't matter who their teammates yeah. are. Patrick Mahomes is going to be great. Anybody he with a scarecrow as his coach, he, right. he'd be great player you don't get rid of a good quarterback to try to shoot for a Patrick Mahomes or a Josh Allen. Like You're, you're right. like, this is what we got. We build around him. Brett Purdy could be this far then Daniel Jones can be too. So I, uh, yeah, I, I think that Daniel Jones is in a very comfortable zone of, Hey, no, I'm not one of those transcendent. I can carry a franchise on my back every week. It doesn't matter what's around me. Is he a system guy? Yes. Does he need help? Probably going forward to unlock a next level that's totally fine. You could build around him and you can win big with guys like that. Yeah. I, I don't have a problem with it. You know, I get, let's see, you know, he's going to have another opportunity now. Um, it's going to be a tough game. Philly. Right. I mean, like it's a team yeah. that knows. Do you give him any chance in that game? You give him any chance? <sighs> maybe. I mean, maybe yeah. like, here's my thing. If, Thibodeau has a really good game, you know, like you got You have to have a couple players really play like max out. Okay. And I think Thibodeau is yeah. a guy who's got, we've seen obviously rookie, but you've seen that he has, you know, not quite Micah Parsons level ability, at least right now to destroy a game, but he's got ability to wreak havoc. So I think if Thibodeau really shows up, I think if Saquon plays, wonderfully i think if Mm -hmm. um they can hit jalen hurts you know and again i want you know let's see if jalen hurts is still working through rust correct i don't give him a great chance but i i again there's that familiarity it's the third time you're gonna see this team as i said i think it it benefits your defense um I don't know. We'll see. But I I, Dayball's clearly a good coach. He'll have ready. I I, I mean I I I think Kyle Shanahan deserves coach of the year because of the yeah, fact yeah, that he too. went through three quarterbacks. The fact that he's got Brock Purdy playing like this. I understand he's surrounded by a lot of talent, but they had other injuries and in other situations. I think Kyle has earned it barely over Brian Dayball. 
Like I think Dayball to me is is like there is a wonderful argument to have to have between those two individuals based on what they did and then looking at their rosters of talent. Um anyway, getting back to this game though. Um mm-hmm. Minnesota, uh I, you know, people are dumping on cousins, all this stuff. Here's my thing. Minnesota I don't you, get you, that, man. You, I don't get that. Whatever. Here's the thing. You score twenty four points at home in a playoff game, you should win. Okay. Mm-hmm. Against the Giants. You should have won. There's a, like to me, people are like, well, you know, this is they are who they who we thought they were, and blah, and they and they always focus that through Kirk Cousins. I I'm sorry, but the defense was never cracked up to be a, a, a top tier unit. No, you you play at home, you cannot surrender 31 points to the Giants. I mean, there's just there's no way I, you cannot convince me that the problem in this game was Kirk Cousins. The problem in this game was people couldn't get to Daniel Jones and he was cutting them up. The problem in this yeah. game was they were ripping off chunk plays, running the football. It just, I, uh, people say whatever they want about. I just think the defense was the problem in this game. I didn't think the offense, right. I didn't think the offense was no, great, but I think you score 24 points in a home playoff game in that place. It's loud as hell. Yeah. You should probably usually win that game, especially yeah. when it's against the giants. Right. And, and a big problem. I mean, Justin Jefferson never really got going, but they Giants just said, look, we're taking him out of the game. If he could beat us out elsewhere, go for it. Hawkinson had a big game. They they got it going on offense. And then the last play, it's it's just a bad decision. Like it's it, it, why yeah. Hawkinson's even running that route. I don't know, right. but he got some pressure on him. Like they, they took Justin out of the play right away by doubling him. And then you know, you're, you're starting to read and the pressure's coming in your face. Kirk said after the game, I, I just had to try to keep the play alive. And so I had to get rid of it. And he throws it to Hawkinson. It looks terrible because it's five yards short of the yeah, sticks. Yeah, it was the sticks. I mean, that was that drove me nuts the second I saw right. where Hawkinson was. Right. I'm like, right. no but play. This, th- there's not a single route here who that should have no. been designed. I don't give a what the pressure is. No route should have been designed beneath the sticks. It should no, have been. Because you're, you're just never going to get that. And. But this is everybody's just wait, just dying to dump on Kirk Cousins yeah. for the loss. When this it wasn't his fault. Like he played fine. He wasn't he's, he's Kirk Cousins. One great. He was probably good enough to win, but the defense let them down. I, I agree. Scored I 20, that's, you scored 24 points 24. at home. And then moved the ball. I think he only had at one point. I don't know what he ended up with. Uh, but at what point he had like five incomplete passes. He was like 27. Frank, if you had ranked all the teams that made the playoffs, okay. Um people arguably would have ranked the Giants dead last or pretty close to it. They would have had an argument about the Giants and the Dolphins starting their third string quarterback. That's that's what would have happened. You mm-hmm. score 24 points at home on that team. Maybe it's 24-21, yeah. but you should win that game. I'm sorry. You, you just don't give up 31 points. Ridiculous. We would have put this game at the top of the schedule just based on everything that happened. <laughs> it's just a, it's a, it's a day old at this point. It'll be two days old by the time people listen to it. But this game is hilarious to me because literally everybody on our NFL staff was texting each other <laughs> during the course of this game. The Jacksonville Jaguars beat the LA Chargers 31 to 30. I am sitting there when it's 27 to nothing, and I'm like, I am turning this off. Like this. Yeah, did you? Garbage. I was gonna ask, did you to be honest? Did, did you turn I it did off? Not. I'm, I'm, all right, I did not. I'm right. dead honest. Now I was I was busied on my, you know, I was like on my phone. I'm you know, oh, I went, me too. I'm yeah, like I was I'm checking I'm, text. I'm, yeah, and doom scrolling. I'm like doing all this yeah, other stuff. Yeah. And the game's on in the background as as I'm doing this, but I didn't turn it off. Dawn went to bed <laughs> and she went yeah. to bed and she's like, This game's over. Like, oh, that's atrocious. Trevor Lawrence stinks. Like, you know, whatever. And, right, and, right. and this was, oh after- my God, the, the tweets, like Twitter's oh, yeah. got this oh. on my desktop anyway, the algorithm Oof. where it's just t- tweets bubbling up from 20 hours ago, right? Over oh, and over. And some of the stuff. tweets had popped up today are just making me laugh. They're like, unbelievable. Trevor Lawrence is a fraud. Is, are we sure he's better than Zach Wilson? Or I, I mean, just ridiculous just things in hindsight. Right? Yeah. But he was that bad early on. I he was. It. It, was, it was. I sat there and I, te- I, I texted Charles McDonald and I was like, I told people this was going to be the fun game. <laughs> I was like, this, I was like, this <laughs> right, is going to yeah. be the good game. This sucks. And Charles sends me back and he's like, he's like, oh man, he's like, I'm at a party right now. And the, the TV's broken. He sends me a picture of the TV and half the TV's blacked out. I was like, yeah, this only means you're missing. I said, you're missing half of Trevor Lawrence. To look like crap. Like I was just going off. And so then, you know, whatever you sit there and all of a sudden there's a score. And I'm like, I'm like, come on, like, this isn't going to happen. I was like, but, you know, Minnesota, 
Indianapolis. Yeah. I'm like, we did see this wild. Like, it's is it completely unthinkable? And as bad as the broadcasting crew was, God, it was terrible. Al Michaels, Tony Dungy, don't yeah, ever not let good, them do another game. Tony did say he talked about his own experience having a comeback and what his message was. You know, at, at, at halftime was, you know, look, we, we played as bad as we possibly could, but we're only down by three touchdowns or whatever he said, three scores. Mm-hmm. And I thought. Yeah, that's I mean, that's actually appropriate here. This is pretty much as bad as Jacksonville could possibly play at this point. And, you know, and I thought to myself, too, like of all the coaches, one of the least uptight guys is Doug Peterson. Like Doug Peterson is not going to be in there freaking out. Um, Then the second score happens and I'm texting Charles. I'm texting you and Brett. I'm texting. I'm like. Is it possible? (laughs) Right. At some point, like, it's it's like, you're like, ah, come on. This isn't really good. And then it's like, oh, well, now. I'm like, this can't happen to Staley, right? Like, come on. Brandon Staley is not. This this isn't going to happen to Brandon Staley, is it? Because this is the worst possible outcome for Brandon Staley. Yeah. Obviously, as everybody knows, they come back. This is amazing comeback. Amazing comeback. Amazing. And I, 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 first of all, Trevor Lawrence, I'll say this that, yeah, the four interceptions. Obviously not ideal and historic in many ways about how bad he was. What does it say about that kid that he's at the end of his second season and his first career playoff start? He throws four interceptions in the first half. Like, how many guys go in the tank at that point? Yeah. Where it just seems like Trevor's like, all right, let's play. I guess he told the guys in the huddle, Jay Busby wrote about this, our guy who was on the scene. He's like, look, fellas, there's no 27-point play. Like, let's just play. Let's let's do one at a time. For him to show that kind of poise, to come back and throw four touchdowns after throwing four interceptions. Yeah. And we're going to look, I think we will look back at this game and be like, that. you know, when we're all making fun of Trevor Lawrence in the first half, uh-uh, it ends up that the story is, no, this is one of the games that's going to make Trevor Lawrence kind of legend grow. Because for him to bounce back like he did, absolutely impressive. Hats off. Because, uh, again, he could have gone in the tank for, for a young quarterback, four first down or four first half interceptions. No, uh, usually you're not bouncing back, but he did. And he led his team to a, a, just a great, great win. I thought it was his Burrow moment. Like, I, I've always enjoyed what mm-hmm. I have thought about Burrow is that he's just nothing phases him. Like, they could be losing. Right. He can be playing like nothing phases. Him. Like, he's, he really is the whole the cool demeanor. It It really resonates with him. I thought this was Trevor's moment where it was, I thought the same thing. I'd covered games where um, I think I watched Ty Detmer throw five, six interceptions. In, I mean, it was in some insane game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're just like, wow, this is a complete and total meltdown by a player. And, you know, we've seen other games where guys have thrown multiple picks and we're like, there's no way they can come back from this. And it didn't, he didn't seem frustrated. He wasn't freaking out. He wasn't like, you know, just Joey Bosa just having a meltdown basically on the field. Like I sure did. And by the way, I agree with some of what Bosa was pissed about. Um, You know, he thought that clearly the game wasn't being officiated very well, but you can't do that late in the game. He cost his team. Like, look, they absolutely slam conversion. Two point conversion goes from two yard line to the one yard line. They end up getting it. They went by one point in regulation. Okay. Well, on a play that that they definitely, they definitely clearly. Correct. Yeah. You're not running that from the two. They could have run it from the two, but that was the when they ran that. I'm like, oh, yeah, his length. They absolutely have practiced this a million times where he just grabs the ball and jams it over the line. What did you think of the fourth and one call? Because I was sitting there like we're all ready for the the quarterback sneak like we talked about. Push him in the back. Let's balls. And they run that jet sweep to Travis. It's it's so balls because if it gets stopped, he is getting criticized all season. Yeah, killed. But it pops for 25 yards. That's game. Like at that point, Riley Patterson's making that field goal. I was impressed. I, I, it's one of the, I hate to be like, wow, what a play call. Cause I would have been shredding them too. If they not, it wouldn't have gotten it, but what a play call. But he did play. get it. I mean, he did. He did. Yeah. I mean, he called, you know, it's the same were, guy who called Philly special. Philly special yeah. Bowl, you like know, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Like when, when they were in Philly special, I'm like, are you out of your freaking mind? <laughs> like, <it's a> great, <laughs> like you did it in the super bowl. Like you nuts. Like, it's, Love it. but when they lined up in that formation, you're sitting there and you're like, man, this is, you know, bully ball. They're just going to run it up yeah, the gut. Could Trevor, and, and, could Trevor get these, you know, a foot and a half to get the first down? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it's, and, and as soon as ETN got the ball in his hands, I was like, holy, I thought he was going to score. I'm like, oh my God. Like he just, as he got to the edge, I was like, I could, I, just unbelievable call. And it's another thing that adds to why 
players really love to play for Doug, you know, like guys really love the fact that they'll just take shots and kind of goes with it. But I'm with you on Lawrence though. It, it is a, Listen, it's a chapter. We'll look back at this one. Yeah. Well, yeah it's a chapter. Absolutely. It's a chapter. What about the, char- what about the chargers? We got to talk about them. Yeah. I mean, this, I guess, you know, we're sitting here Sunday night, nothing's happened to Brandon <laughs> Staley. It's, uh, for everybody who was saying this guy might not survive this, I don't necessarily disagree. Like with the sentiment, mm. Mike Williams doesn't play in this game because of his yeah, main decision in Williams Week 18, thing. and they blew this. And it's just it looked uh, and I kind of tongue in cheek, whatever, kind of patrolling a little bit. Said on Twitter, "Boy, that Chargers team looked like a team that was tired from not resting last week in the second half, huh? Right? Like uh, they kind of ran out of gas. Maybe maybe should have taken that bye week." What do you think of just where the Chargers go from here? Even if Brandon Staley returns, it's like this is the kind of loss that could really linger on a franchise. Okay, for a here's long time. here's where I'm gonna I'm gonna do my thing. I'm gonna do the patience thing here, right? Okay, all right. Um Mike Williams, he deserves every bit of that criticism. He screwed up, right? Like he you sacrificed the player in a meaningless game who could have helped you in this game, and it definitely hurt them. Okay, so he he deserves every bit of that criticism. The mm-hmm. missed kick from a kicker who just doesn't miss, okay. At one other miss, right? He misses just an absolute gimme. Is not Brandon Staley's fault. Okay, could have meant the difference correct. in the game. That guy just makes the kick. Second miss all year. Yeah, yeah. Right. Bosa losing his mind. Not on Brandon Staley. Okay, that's on Bosa. You you mm-hmm. know what? He's a hundred million dollar defensive end. Okay, he's a team leader. He's a captain. He's an All Pro guy. He's a you know perennial Defensive Player of the Year candidate. He. Okay, and he, by the way, like he was ready to tear it out of the frame a couple of plays. Okay, and that's on him. And he should take he should absolutely take the blame for that and know that he hurt Brandon Staley too. Brandon Staley Mm -hmm. had more to lose here than probably anybody else on that roster. Right. It's just a bunch of young guys. Most of them. Um, They also were up 27 to nothing. (laughs) <laughs> okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna not give him credit for the fact that they were up 27 yeah. to nothing yeah, in this yeah. game so i sit there and i'm like is brandon staley clean not at all has he made mistakes yes and it's frustrating that he seems to need to make the mistakes to learn from the mistakes okay i think he will learn from the mike williams thing it sucks that he had to learn from the mike williams thing um like I said, they took a step forward. They got into the playoffs. They were up 27 to nothing in a game they definitely shouldn't lose. If a kicker makes it, we're, we're yeah, going, sure. man, yeah. Staley, you screwed this up. You lucky you pulled it out, whatever. And by the way, Sean Payton this, Sean Payton that. Sean Payton going to make $20 million a year, and the Spanos family does not pay people like that, okay? They don't. If they decide now that they're going to do it, it's because – they don't have stadium costs. They have a cheapest. Yeah, I was gonna lease. say to pay like a dollar a dollar a year. For a yeah, <laughs> yeah, the one dollar a year sweetheart at least a million dollar stadium. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like it's it's a gift basically um, from the league. Do I think Sean Payton should want that job? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Heck it's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's easily job. the best open. Yeah, I don't easily. think there's any question if it if it comes open. Um, I think Staley gets another year here, and I think the only reason okay. you would fire him is if Payton says to you, "I am coming." Just fire. I'm a done deal. Yeah, yeah. I'm a done deal. Not not fire him and then we'll talk. I am. I'm. Let's park the plane in the tarmac. We'll do the. You'll put the contract in front of me. I'll agree to it verbally. Fire the guy. Um, you deal with the Rooney Rule backlash because clearly you have chosen a coach without interviewing anybody else, or you'll go through the <laughs> sham interviews. That's the only way that um, I would I would fire Brandon Staley at this point. And I agree with that. I, I'll, I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah. Uh, only if you know you can land him, maybe even Harbaugh, whatever, but don't do it and just say, you know, then say, all right, who do we got? Uh, yeah. You need to know if you're firing a guy like Brandon Staley, who for, you know, I, I have been critical of him the last couple of weeks, but 10 and seven, you're like, you said, they were up 27 zip in a playoff game. It's just, this is just, this is, it, it really is a kind of loss where you're just like, boy, this, this just, sticks with you a long time and now the chargers are going into that whole like justin herbert contract extension that's gonna eat up a lot of cap this god is a bad loss let's be honest about the world we live in and our part that we play in it all we did was on trevor lawrence for a half and then on brandon staley for (laughs) half that was it that's what we do now we take everything that we say about this guy and then we just slide it over to the other guy and 
now we're not sitting here talking. Instead, we're talking about well, all the Kirk Cousins. He just gets it all the time. Right. Yeah. He's, so he's no matter, matter, yeah, no matter what Kirk does. Whether he's good or not. He does matter. something good. It's like, what other guy helped him do that? <laughs> like, <laughs> Kevin O'Connell is such a great coach. Justin Jefferson's the greatest wide receiver in the world. Kirk is Indeed. lucky. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I just. But no, I, mean, I get what you're You know, saying, we're, right? we're, we're, we're sitting here and we're talking about all the virtues of Trevor Lawrence when, hey, he did throw four picks, man. Like, he did. Come on. It wasn't, you know, like, yeah, congratulations. You pulled yourself up by the bootstraps. So why don't we say, well, hey, Brand Staley did, was a 27 nothing lead. They clearly came out ready yeah. to go. It wasn't like they were not focused or prepared. They were clearly focused and prepared, and the defense played really well, and they were picking off passes, and, you know, they had it. They had it going. They just, they lost it, so. Absolutely. Just a, a just crazy, crazy game. We're not going to see one like that in a long time. I just... Just insane. I don't know. We saw two. We saw two this season. Like, come on. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, what is going on even? Uh, Let's swing it ahead to a game that was similarly crazy, but in a much different way. Buffalo Bills win this one 34-31 over the Miami Dolphins. You talk about just being checked out on a game. It's 17 zip early on. And I'm like, oh my God, this might be like 51-3. This is going to be so bad. And then all of a sudden you look up and it's like, all right, the Dolphins got a field goal. And then. Josh Allen starts throwing it around the field, and you're like, all of a sudden, the Dolphins are in this thing. There, it's just weird. I, I'll be honest. I look at this, and I do downgrade the Buffalo Bills. I said I didn't with the Bengals because that's just a tough matchup for them. The fact that, and I get, I, I get it that that seven of the points were just straight defense, defensive touchdown for Miami. But you know, thirty one Miami Dolphins and Skylar Thompson at home when we're expecting you to be a Super Bowl favorite, basically. I thought Josh Allen was really, really loose in this game. And that you yeah. can't play that way against the Bengals. Can't play that way against the Chiefs or whoever you might play in the Super Bowl and win a game. If they play like this again, they ain't winning that Super Bowl. Maybe I'm being too harsh on the Bills, am I? Because I came out of this game like, I don't know. They got to tighten a lot of things up if they're going to win a Super Bowl because this was this was a bad game for them. It really was. They won because Miami didn't have its quarterback. A two-up plays in this game. Miami's moving on and Buffalo's going home. I thought, I thought yeah, I mean, I thought Allen... I think loose is the right term. He definitely threw some balls that he shouldn't have, including one that was a touchdown, which was, it was both an unbelievably amazing pass, but also like a psychopathic amount of ego to throw the pass to Dawson Knox behind the defender. And I have no doubt he was trying to throw it behind the defender and Dawson Knox sticks his arm out on the other side of the defender and, and wrangles the touchdown, which was just, it was sick. It was unbelievable. But I sat there and That's I'm right. like, I don't know if I want him having that level of confidence right now. Because sometimes when he has that level of confidence, you know, the hero ball thing kicks in and then yeah. there's turnovers and there's problems. I, the crazy thing about this too, Skylar Thompson, I didn't even play an amazing game, but you know what? He had some drops that could have dramatically. I know, right? Like they were not screwed. helping that kid. No, at not all. at all. Yeah. Like, like uh, Jalen Waddle, I mean, I'm like, yeah, there are a couple. I'm like, good. I thought it was like the sun in his close. eyes, like just horrible right. stuff. Tyreek Hill. I mean, uncharacteristic stuff. I think they could have helped him. I I give Miami, I give Mike McDaniel credit because I think Vegas said it was going to be a blowout. No one really gave him any chance. What was the final line on it? It was ridiculous. It was Got to 14, 14, four, which is about 14. as high as you're ever going to see ever. in a playoff game. In a know? playoff game. I think you there's dare. been, I think there's been, I did this research in a Super Bowl era. So we're talking 50 some years. There's only about 23 games with a spread of 13 or more. That's how rare. Yeah. So you're saying they're going to get curb stump. That's what yeah. you're getting curb stump. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. Didn't happen. Thought they fought. As you said, the 17 0 hole. I was like, I thought the same thing you did. I'm like, this is gonna be a slaughter. It's gonna be this is gonna be the one where we're like, this is just horrible. Right. And instead they come back and you know, lead the game. And like it's it was everything about it was um I think it was a gold star for for Miami fighting. And oh it, without a doubt. Yeah. It was crazy to me afterward that Jeff Darlington, you know, had to basically put out this tweet saying, look. Mike McDaniel, uh, Chris Greer, Tua. There's not right now. It's no news. He's like basically saying like, "Hey, no news." Usually, I don't get into no news being news, but there's no changes. I'm paraphrasing Jeff here, but basically yeah, well, saying there's no the change. deal with that. Why are people I, so quick to fire Mike McDaniel? I like have that, no. That dude had a great year. He turned Tua's career around. No clue. And they, they lost like. 
of absurd. seven games. So what, 6K and 5K with Tua either injured or concussed? Played in the with one three different Bay quarterbacks. Like, okay. Yeah, you dealt what with are we doing here? Significant concussion issues to your starter who played remarkably better under your tutelage. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's a joke. It's just a complete joke. And, and if I know part of the driving idea is, well, Stephen Ross is just so, he's so uh, locked in on Sean Payton. He's so obsessed with having Sean Payton. I mean, yeah. Okay. I, if he does that, if Stephen Ross fires Mike McDaniel against Sean Payton, I can't wait to talk about what a joke of an owner Stephen Ross is. Like, wow. like it is absolutely. Even for Payton, honestly, really? Like, for I'm, me, I'm look, sitting here man, saying, well, look, you got Sean Payton. Look, look, All right. Look, look. look. I like Sean. Okay. He's got like Sean. Very, like his very. candor. It's a very good interview. He's been great. You know, this past year he's been out. He's been, I think he's even been great the last couple of years talking about the league. I don't want to say anything bad about Sean. Okay. Sean's a really good coach. Okay. But when you compare Sean's record body of work to Mike McCarthy's, it's remarkable that like Dallas hiring Mike McCarthy was like, what the hell? Oh, it was just like, it was just looked like an absolute uh, yeah. wart of a hire. But Sean was smart and said, I'll leave a year early rather than a year late. And that <laughs> way I will maintain some of this luster that I have. But when you look at his record, okay, with the I'm Hall of Fame quarterback. This. I'm not buying this. All right, we'll I, have the argument I later. I think Sean is a, is a gold star coach. He's an amazing he's coach. Listen, no, 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 don't get I me wrong. I think he's top 10. He's an amazing right? coach. He's an amazing offensive mind. Look at his numbers without Drew Brees. Okay, just fair. Just to be fair, there barely been any. Be he's had like a, he's had like a, a handful of games basically without Drew Brees. To be fair, like I said, look at just go ahead, just track down the stats without Drew Brees. There's there's something to be said if we if we just say, hey, Mike Mike was tied to Aaron Rodgers his whole career in Green Bay. Well, okay, Sean was tied to Drew Brees his entire career. Sure. In, in uh, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, it's I'm just fair, saying. Look, but, I'm just saying. It's 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 yeah, yeah. not a slam dunk argument that you're right this time, Frank. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, might be something to this. What? what? Anyway, we really? got that we got way off the rails here. Right. Um, By the way, real quick, I just want to know anything to worry about with the Bills here? Or is this just like a whatever? You moved on. Good. You're going to be great next week, like we thought you were. Or is this something that? Am I wrong to be like? Hey, look, two weeks ago. Everybody was, oh, wow, Naheem Hines, two kickoff returns. Yeah, they needed two kickoff returns to beat the Patriots at home. Like, is there problems with this team? No. Are we not mm -mm. talking enough about the Bills? Be kind of no, a little shakier than we think? I watched them struggle to beat Detroit on Thanksgiving, and I was like, oh, should we be worried? And mm -hmm. they they got themselves together down the stretch. Like, I don't, you know, I, I, th okay. I think they're going to be fine. Okay, now that said, play Cincinnati, it's a, it's a comparably talented team. OK, you got it. And you got a quarterback who's on your level uh, is on the Josh Allen yep. level. So, I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's now if they lose to Cincinnati, am I sitting there going, oh, my God? No, I mean, it's Cincinnati is a damn good team. So I'm not uh, I mean, that's fair. But at the same time, if this bill season ends in the divisional round, we're, we're all like, right or wrong. We're all looking at it as a failure. I mean, this is their season. Yeah. If it's not going to happen this year, probably we talked about this in August when we were doing the previews. If it ain't going to happen this year, it may not happen ever. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if they just if it's the same thing where Josh is throwing three interceptions next week or fumbling one away and it's I don't know. I, I think I just, it matters. I'm a little I'm a little more wary about the bills after this. game. I think it matters how Josh plays in this game. I do, you know, but. Yeah, let's see. Let's let's make that decision after we see. Uh, right. If they lose, let's see how Josh plays in this loss. And and I look, I'd be inclined to be like, hey, you know, they could really use Von Miller right now, but let's be real. Cincinnati could also use three starting offensive yeah, line. I mean, so yeah, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna toss the injury interest. thing. Yeah. Everybody has an injury. I'm gonna toss line, that out the way. Of course. All right. Uh moving on. The the really the only blowout. I mean, just the true like blowout game. It was, you know, it's competitive, but Clearly, hey, come on, man. Seahawks are feisty. They're yeah, leading they, at half. Hey, no, early on. I mean, the first half, definitely. Yeah, it was competitive. The second half, I mean, the wheels kind of fell off. But San Francisco yeah. beat the Seattle Seahawks 41 to 23. I don't, I mean, I, the thing that I walked away with, I was like, was this like a bad Brock Purdy game? And I'm like, if this is a bad Brock Purdy game, I don't right. know what That's else what, to Charles, I'm sitting here like the last 24 hours or so on Twitter is a lot of people like, 
just taking digs at Brock Purdy and, oh, he's not good and he had terrible throws and he's shaky and I were The dude, uh, whatever, the dude threw for 332 yards, three touchdowns, his first playoff start. I'm not saying that he's lighting the world on fire. I'm not saying he's Patrick Mahomes all of a sudden, but he's been given a very specific job and he is doing this job to the absolute best we could ever expect. from. That was the worst game I've seen him play since he first got the job that first week. Okay. And I'm like, mm-hmm. but if this is bad, <laughs> like, dude, it's uh, he's, probably you're in pretty good all shape. He's gotta do, he, all he's got to do is, do, Bill Belichick, do your job. And he is doing it at a very efficient level. He knows, uh, yeah, I just got to get the ball to wide open, Debo Samuel. There's nothing wrong with that. There's the first dunk up Brock Purdy over this. Is he putting a franchise on his back and carrying him? No, but uh, the people are arguing against that are just coming up a straw man. Who's really saying that? Okay, Who's wait, really wait, out wait, there wait, like, okay, first like Brock Purdy is just the greatest okay. quarter? He's in that. People say whatever the hell they want. He's playing better than Jimmy Garoppolo. He's playing better than Trey yes. Lance. Okay? Trey Lance yeah. didn't play like this. He was in there for a little bit, right? He did not look anything like this. No. Not even close. Okay? I watched Trey Lance in practice. Looked terrible. Okay? Accuracy issues all over the place. Right. Some flashes here and there. But, yeah, no. Not even close. Jimmy Garoppolo, um, all these limitations, you know. Oh, Jimmy's, you know, he's he's good. He's just, you know, steward of the ship, you know, game manager, blah, 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 all this stuff. He's This kid's played better than Jimmy Garoppolo. And if you don't really believe that, you have not watched all the games. And I've literally oh, watched I every – because I, I, I wanted to tip over the, the you know, hype train. But when I, every time I watch, I'm like, God, man, I don't know. Like, he just – He's fitting perfectly with what they're asking him to do. And that's all. Again, he's not He's not going to be Patrick Mahomes and just say, uh, or Trevor Lawrence, we're down 27 points. Let, let me just pass our way back in. That's not who he is. That's not who the 49ers are. The 49ers have done a fantastic job. By the way, I do agree with you on Kyle Shanahan being coach of the year. When you look at the totality of this season, everybody, you know, everybody's talking about well, the guys are just running wide open and he's got all these talent. Yes, that's part of every quarterback success plan is who's around you, who's scheming this stuff up for you. And Brock, we can't, I'm not going to dig him for doing his job really, really well. It's an incredible story going on. And this this 49ers team has this swagger right now that they don't seem like they, they're fearful of anybody or think they could lose to anybody. They, they had their shaky moments in the first half against Seattle, but the second half was just, that's how the 49ers have played basically since Brock Purdy took over the job. And I, I just, it's, they're the best team of football right now. That doesn't mean they're going to win a Super Bowl I, because you know, they still a lot of, they are still going to have to play good teams and all that kind of stuff. But if you're asking me who is playing the best right now, it's easily the San Francisco 49ers and Purdy's a part of that. He just, he simply yeah. is. I don't disagree. I mean, they can run the ball. They're deep, especially now that Debo's back. I mean, when you look up and down the depth chart. He is so good. My, I almost kind of, I didn't forget, but he reminded me. There's some plays he made where it's like third and nine, and they throw a three-yard pass to him, and yeah. he just goes and gets 10 more yards because he's Debo's We forgot he's, about he's last year. Like last year, he was inhuman. It was unbelievable. It was insane yeah. the year he had last year. It was unbelievable. That's right. And, He's yeah. just that dude who's just better than everybody else on the field. And he really is. He's that guy. It was funny, too, because it's like, you know, well, yeah, they'll get Debo back. But I mean, you know, when I'm like, no, like, that's just like you need Debo back. He's going to be a, a world beater for you. No, they're deep everywhere. You look, it's they're wonderfully put together. The defense is clicking. Um, I think they are playing the best football right now. And and again, the only impediment is the fact that they have a kid who's a rookie. Um who's you know but he played his first playoff game okay so that's out the door it's not the first right. experience he's had um and a game with some adversity like i said seattle i think led this game at halftime if i remember it seems like a week ago but they i it was a it was a it was start to second half there was some adversity they had to battle through and he wasn't phased he just he kept playing really well real quick on gino um because people are going to ask this they're going to say well does this disqualify gino from you know the quarterback job or getting the deal that he get. I, I don't think so. I, th- no. I, I think Seattle in my mind, given how Gino played this entire season, I didn't even think Gino, I didn't think he had a bad game against the 49ers played a killer defense. Um, yeah, this defense is just fierce. <laughs> or, I think or they Walmart. offer him, you know, four years, you know, uh, 120 million and, okay. 70 and I you think know, Gino's 70 to the point, I Gino's smart enough after all he's been through in the NFL to realize I think we've talked about this on the pod 
don't screw up happiness. No. They, they value me. Yeah. I had a good year here. I'm set up for success here. What am I going to do? Go chase another $10 million yeah. in Carolina or whoever's going to sign. No, just don't screw this up. They're going to give you a fair offer. Take it. Be rich and be happy the rest of your career and see what, where this goes from here. I didn't think he played bad. I really didn't. I, he's not the kind of quarterback who's just going to light up the best defense in the NFL. We all know that. But I think he showed again and again this season that – Look, when they went through their slumps, I didn't think it was really his fault. He was playing fine. He wasn't great in the second half of the year, but didn't have Kenneth Walker for a long time. Mm -hmm. Their defense really fell apart. I I didn't put any of this really on him. I thought he played pretty well from beginning to end. Hats off to him, and no question to me in my mind, Seattle shouldn't be thinking about another quarterback. Like, Look, if it falls off the rails next year with Geno, then it does, whatever. But I think the right decision right now is you pay Geno and and. You just say, we could build around him, and we could build a pretty good thing around him. They have youth in the defense that should get better. They have youth on the yeah. offensive line that should get better. Kenneth Walker's much better. On a, Starting on a, two rookie tackles. Yeah, I mean, that, absolutely. That's pretty like, you're, you're, they have a lot to like, and they have, what, the number four pick in the draft? Um, uh, I four? think it's out of the top. I No, Indy has four, so I don't know where they stand, but it's, it's a high pick, yeah. I mean, they're going to be tempted. Look, if levis or whoever is on the clock when they're drafting i don't know like it's gonna be like well what do we do but i just think you you say this guy's good enough we're gonna we're gonna build around him we're gonna basically we just looked in the mirror and saw hey would you build it doesn't matter if your quarterback's not elite it's rest your team's elite you can win a super bowl everybody i think right now san francisco can win a super bowl so they all know that they got mr irrelevant serving they have the fifth pick you know uh, seattle's got fifth pick if something happens and Bryce Young slips to five and you think Bryce Young's an all world talent, the only reason I would do it is to go, okay, well now we got another rookie quarterback deal. Yeah. We can build, we can build around this team pretty quickly. Um, and we think this guy's, you know, absolutely it. I don't know at five. I think they have the asset. Gino had a good, Gino had a good year. And what happened on Saturday doesn't change my mind even a little bit because San Francisco is just that much better than everybody right now. They're, they're again, they're just gonna they're gonna pummel a lot of good quarterbacks, not just Geno Smith. Yeah, I agree with you. We're on the same page. Um, all right, well, that's it. That was a great, great first round up until this point. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for everybody uh, for being on. And remember, you can always find Frank on Twitter at Yahoo Schwab. You can get me at Charles Robinson. You can get our producer at Brett Raider. Make sure you check out the mothership at Yahoo Sports. And if you could, please help us keep Trez Taylor's legacy alive. Check out Breaking Tea. That's capital T dot com uh, slash Trez for the all juice tea or hoodie. Remember that proceeds from that purchase go to support the Trez A. Taylor Scholarship at Howard University. You can also support that scholarship as well as the one in Trez's name at Power Mizzou. If you check out our podcast description, we will tell you how to donate. Um, give us a five star review. Tell a friend. Really appreciate it. And there will be a bonus mini pod Monday night after the uh, Dallas Tampa game. So tune in for that. We uh, we will know the completed playoff slate, what the picture looks like, and uh, very exciting. Hopefully we'll have something to talk about. So we'll see you then. Peace.